Right, good morning everyone. Um, it is 7.30, 7.33 on the 15th, Wednesday the 15th of uh, February, year 2017. I am, it's early today and I thought, I'm absolutely full of beans this morning. I'm actually full of word and worship because we had the life group at uh, some of our church members get together in the week. We all do it, we've got various groups dotted all around the Mansfield areas and we get together and we um, we take a Bible passage or two, or a book from the Bible, and we have a discussion on it and its meaning and its, uh, what it means to us in the world as born again Christians. And it's a great thing because it, it lifts you up. And we sing a few songs, and I did last night. I actually led the worship last night, which is the first time I've done it. It's the first time ever I've led a group where I've not been playing heavy metal or punk rock. And I played acoustic, we played some worship songs, and word of worship lifts me right up, it energises me. And I woke up, and the thing is, when you're in a worship team, the Lord writes these songs on your heart. And when you wake up in the morning, you might, you'll have a tune in your head. And the reason you have a good tune in your head is because the Lord has written it on your heart. And this is what I truly believe. And I woke up this morning full of word and worship, and I've got these fantastic songs, songs of worship, songs of praise in my head this morning, and it absolutely gives me life. So I thought I'd crack on, I'd get up, and it's either that or it's a coffee I've just had. It's not a coffee. So I thought I'd get up, and Michelle has gone to university really early. She left the house before seven this morning because she has to be there for nine, and the buses just don't work out for her. She gets the bus she should get. She don't get there till ten past, quarter past nine, and misses the first lesson. And so she has to get the bus an hour early. So she's already in town at 7.30 in the morning. Ain't got a bit university till nine. So she's gone for a big coffee. So I've decided to do an on the bench video. And I do apologize for my talking about word and worship and stuff. I know it doesn't interest a lot of people out there, but I am Christian guitars and I'm gonna mention these things now again. But anyway, I thought I would do an on the bench video. And I've got loads, loads of guitars lined up here to be blobbing on me. So what I'm going to do is without further ado, I'm going to crack on. And I'm going to see if I remember this one. I bought last, I bought this last year. I didn't pay a lot for it. What a beautiful looking guitar. It's a 335 type guitar, made no less by Antoria, who were making out of Japan in the 70s. And they branched out a little bit to Korea in the late 70s, early 80s. And this is one of those models. And it's an EG1935, I believe. EG1935 based on the um, Gibson 335. What a beautiful guitar. Set neck, beautiful sunburst. This came in needing quite a lot of work when I got it. I had to glue the neck, the fretboard back onto the neck both sides here, which I did. And the frets were in a really bad way. So I did a complete refret, which you can see here. Absolutely beautiful job. No sticking out anywhere. The frets are beautifully level. I've also stuck on a bone knot. Uh, which I had knocking about. Um, it's got all the gold hardware, it's got original Kent Armstrong pickups, decent uh, wiring in there. One big problem with this is the original bridge. You see here, these screws are snapped inside, most of them, so I had to replace it, and I'm going to replace it. I could not find one of these anywhere. So I've had to go and buy something as close to it as I could get. A good one, expensive one. One of the, made at the, where they met with Wilkinson gear in Korea. So I imagine this is top brand, it could be Goto, I don't know, the Goto factory, whatever. But I bought that to replace it. But the thing is here, the holes, bridge holes just do not line up. So again, I've got to modify the guitar again. And what I'm going to have to do is, These holes here, they don't line up, we need moving out two millimetres. So what I've got to do is, I've got to plug these holes, the dial by the way that come, especially 12 mm, this is only 11 mm, it's not wide enough. I've complained and um, they're going to send me some more thicker than measured it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, have to plug these holes, I'm going to get some good wood glue in there, maybe even some uh, epoxy in there. I'm going to, have to plug these holes, sand this flush, and I'm going to, to re-drill slightly wider for the new bridge. So that's that one out of the way, the Antoria. I'm going to then move this on. I don't know what I'm going to sell it for. I'm going to, I think I'll put it up for like 175 quid and see how we get on because I've got money in this. I've put quite a lot of money and a lot of work in this. I mean the refret itself, it's uh, 
that will be an 130, 150 pound job for a refret um, on an electric, on something like this, nice big chunky frets. So I've got a lot of money invested in this, so I've got to make some of it back. Now, moving on to the next guitar. Completely something, again, different. Now this, I love this guitar. I bought this two weeks ago. Wasn't really where I couldn't afford it, but what I was supposed to do is, I'm supposed to be selling my Edwards Explorer. And that's going to be going up, well, I've got a little bit of finishing to do on that. But I'm going to be putting that up for about 800 quid, 850 quid with the case. And I was going to thinking of getting an Explorer replacement. And this is the replacement. Absolutely beautiful guitar. It's an Epiphone. It was made at the Unsung Factory in the year 2000. Uh, you look at the number up on there, it's... U0012 1717. I love the 1717 on the back because 17 to me signifies to a Christian. 17 number, number 17 represents the Lord's victory against Satan. And this has got 1717, so it's a double portion of the Lord's victory. So, so me. So, absolutely brilliant. So, um, I've got this, and uh, like I said, I bought it as a replacement. I would, the idea was to sell my Edwards and buy. An Explorer, but this came up. It came up for two hundred pound. Now these guitars, I think they're five hundred pound or something when they came out. We don't make them anymore. It's got a couple of dings and a couple of holes here and there, which I'm not bothered about. But this is in that good condition, and he only took for two hundred pound. Well, I got in touch with him, and I offered, uh, he he, acts, he says he'll accept one hundred and eighty quid for cash. So I bought it, and there you go. And you see the pick guard here. It's black. They normally come with a white one. I don't like the white ones, and I also don't like. It's just a thing about I do not like gold hardware. So what I've decided to do with this is I'm going to go all black. I've ordered some black kidney shaped tuners to go on there. They're going to go. So I'm going to go with black hardware. I'm also going to put on a black, I've got one somewhere, black stop top piece, a black roller bridge. I'm going to put on black knobs. And I've got some fantastic zebra pickles which I'm going to stick in there. I'm just going to whiz them out now. And I'm going to, so it's going to be all black with a little bit of white flashing. I'm going to go with zebra pickups. I've got a pair here, look. These are, I had these custom made, these pickups by Ben Fletcher of Fletcher Pickups. They're going in. So I'm going to have zebra pickups, all black hardware, black knobs, a little bit of white trim, white knot on there. It's going to be brilliant. And I'm going to restain the um, neck. Uh, the fingerboard. It's actually been stained with um, ebony wood stain to make it look black or as dark as possible. Uh, because then the guitar is going to look, basically it's going to look all black. It's going to be absolutely wonderful when it's finished. Um, I like dark guitar when it comes to dark guitars. I'm also going to change, it's got an extra, it's got one there, a strap pin, and one at the back. I don't know which one works best, but whichever one works best, when I've got it strapped around my shoulder, I'll remove the other one and I'll fill the hole. And we'll get it all nice and neat in there. So that's another one on the bench, one of my own. I'm going to get some work done on that. I've ordered, like I say, I've ordered the parts. Then I'm going to move on to... Um, this, belong, this guitar belongs to Lorraine. She used to be in the worship team at our church, but she left to go to another church. And she plays, she plays guitar and she sings. And this is a guitar she's got with a bit of belly swell here, and the action is horrendously high. So what we're going to do is here, I'm going to get rid of this belly swell. The bridge is tilted forward. I'm going to get the bridge tilted back once I get all this done. And I'm going to shave off some wood from the top of this bridge, probably a millimeter. It means then I'm going to shave. I'm going to then remove the saddle, and I'm going to take off. At the very least, I'm going to take off two millimetres off the bottom of this. And with the wood shave, it shave off the top of here, it means I can maybe even shave three millimetres off. And it's going to drop that action right, right down by at least two millimetres at this end. It's going to give us a nice low action and it's going to make the guitar playable. Not a lot of man hours in this, but there's going to be a lot of waiting about and we're going to have to get this all clamped up and get a good piece of wood clamped on there and some good weight. And we're going to have to get some moisture inside. How we do that is we take a something like takeaway pot like this. We'll get it in the hole, or we'll get the lid in the hole, and we'll put a damp cloth on top. So, that, and the reason we put plastic underneath is so the water doesn't soak into the bottom of the guitar. And once it's inside the guitar, we'll lay the guitar somewhere. We'll put it aside, probably under a bed or somewhere, 
and we'll seal this hole and we'll have it all clamped up with some weight on top and what's going to happen is over a matter of days the moisture from a damp cloth is going to get into this top and with the weight on top and the clamps that bow that's in there we're going to lose it it's going to get out once we put moisture back in the wood it's going to send it back to where it was originally and that in itself is going to bring that bridge back then I'm going to recommend to Lorraine that we go with a lighter string because it's going to be at least 60 kilogram of tension from here to here we, once these strings are tightened to the concert pitch if we drop to a lighter gauge we might drop that down to 45 50 kilograms pull and it means it's going to pull less on this and it's less likely then for the guitar and the body to warp again uh, but that said what a lovely looking guitar it's a vintage uh, vintage are a great brand I've mentioned before uh, owned by John Horn Miskews JHS it's a Korean made guitar it's a beautiful looking thing model number is EY50-CS made in Korea by a vintage and it even says on the label in there I don't know if you can see it vintage John Horn Miskews underneath I actually didn't, I didn't read that before I actually knew this before I read that anyway um, so yeah a lovely lovely looking guitar another one to work on I've got guitars doing, I've got I've quite a few inquiries, I've got loads of new customers, loads of new clients I've had lately. Uh, I've been doing some really good work this year. Um, you know, and the business itself it is rising, 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 up and up and up. Uh, getting great reviews out there on Facebook. For those of you who don't know my Facebook page, it's Facebook uh, www.facebook.com forward slash N G O N E S E V E N forward slash so it's facebook.com forward slash ng17 uh, the ng17 coming from a postcode ng17 uh, and I also uh, use that as naked guitars the number 17 being our Lord's Victory as well so I actually love how that all ties in so ng17 um, then we're going to move on again some of you will remember the uh, AXL Les Paul I had come in the other week we cannot contact the owner he's not answered his phone or anything so that's on hold at the minute I've replaced the electrics in this twice there you go, there's the new ones second lot of electrics, complete set of new wiring well that's twice I've done that and the guitar is still buzzing so what I've done is I've gone and ordered some copper insulation tape and I'm going to insulate in an inside ear, inside ear, inside the pickle cavity, see if we can get rid of that buzz because the buzz goes when you press put it on the bridge or the pots. It could just be cycle hum from the uh, electric supplier, I don't know, but there's no reason I can't explain how we're still getting that. So I'm going to try that and um, we can't get in touch with the owner, so I don't know what's happening with this. I might end up keeping the guitar as payment or whatever and see how we go. It's a nice guitar, if I can get the electric sorted out, I'll be pleased to punch with that. So that's another one to work on, it's on hold. Um, but I can still get the tape in there. And then finally, for today, well not finally, because I've got more, I've got more than this one. But, but I've got this one, this is my own guitar. This is my Korean, Japanese built, not Korean, Japanese built. Uh, it's a Kramer Focus 3000. Uh, the chicken beak headstock on there dates it at 1983 which means this guitar is a piece of art I've got a um, we've got a custom wound not a regular Duncan Seymour Duncan Invader an actual custom shop one in there so that again from that era early 80s absolutely fantastic sounding pickup and I've got an original it's not here right now I've got an original Floyd Rose tremolo this is one of the very first, if I can find it, here it is, this is one of the very first ones made when um, Kramer themselves actually became a distributor of the Floyd Rose Tremolo. Floyd Rose was knocking these out in his garage and his hand making them all and demand got that big, he decided he needs a factory to stop, uh, so he needs some distribution and he needs these made somewhere else. So, he approached Schala in, in Germany and they agreed to make them. If you look on there, you've got the uh, Made in Germany stamp on the bottom there, which is Schala. And Kramer took over the distribution. So you could only get Floyd Rose Tremolos 
in the early 80s from Kramer who were having these guitars made by ESP in Japan, Japan, not Korea, proper, proper guitars with these tremolos. Now this is one of the very earliest double locking tremolos made by Sharla, distributed by uh, Kramer. It came to me in absolutely original condition, but I've put a more modern tremolo arm holder on there, bracket, um, and I've put on a, an original floor as a big block to give more sustain. This tremolo is the absolute bee's knees. But the reason this guitar is in bits and it's been stripped is a couple of reasons. It needs a bit of work on the neck. Now on these guitars you don't get a lot of rosewood. While that is, I don't know, but there's not a lot of rosewood here on the neck. Look, it's not that thick. Um, which is fine in itself as long as it, the rosewood doesn't wear. But the problem with this is the rosewood has worn. And I don't know if you can see. You can feel it more than anything. But here, there are deep grooves where the strings are bedded in, and here, and here. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to somehow fill this. Now, I can't just put a strip of glue on there. I'm going to clean it all up. I'm going to take the frets off. Because it'll make it a lot easier. And once I've taken the frets off, I'm going to dampen this. I'm going to basically saturate it in water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blade, a standing blade, and I'm going to cut along the grain. And what that's going to do is it's going to open the grain up where there are deep grooves and I'm going to pack it full of a mixture of glue, super glue, well not super glue, just glue and dust. Uh, rose, I've got a, load, a bag of rosewood dust poured away somewhere and what we're going to do is we're going to fill these holes and we're going to pack it back down and what we're going to do is once it's packed down and set we're going to put, run a bead of super glue over it all and once it's set rock hard I'm going to remove all the frets and I'm going to sand the fretboard and I'm going to re-radius it and it's going to make everything all again, it's going to bring this hard to where these grooves are we will have lost some depth in there, it's going to fill all these holes out and we're going to pack it up and we're going to rebuild, basically rebuild the wood up and once we've done that and got it all set and re-radiused, I'm going to use radius blocks I'll explain how we do that when I do it I'm going to refret it now the good thing about it is this is a Japanese built so I imagine it's Japanese wire, now these frets are a bit, I'd say the medium jumbo, I'm going to go with jumbo fret wire, so super jumbo fret wire and I've actually got some Japanese fret wire in my drawer down here made by Hosco, the company Hosco who were uh, a very well renowned and a Japanese firm making guitar parts and luthier tools like these are Hosco nut files, these cost me 75 quid they're razor sharp files, all different widths uh, they'll last me a lifetime so it's the best of gear. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to basically, and what we're going to do then is we're going to put this guitar back together and we're going to have it looking more or less original. It's an absolutely wonderful guitar to play. This was, believe it or not, it was a, a, a dumpster find. The guy found it in a dumpster and he couldn't believe in what good condition it was. He wanted 175 quid for it and I offered him, offered him 140 uh, with postage, which he agreed to. So I got it for 140 quid posted. The tremolo system itself is worth more than that, uh, and the pickup, the pickup with tremolo, you'd probably get three, it was 300 quid's worth right there. So I've got an Argent 83 Japanese made guitar that is an absolutely wonderful guitar to look at and play. It's amazing. I couldn't put a value on it because um, it's not so much where it's priceless, it's just I would not sell this for 500 quid if you offered me 500 quid now. Not that it will get that. It's just that the guitar is worth more than that for what it is. It's a piece of history. It's the Japanese luthiers, uh, the workmanship, the craftsmanship has gone into that, and the, and the love and the care and attention and the parts. It's just such an amazing guitar. Um, it's one of those things I'm not going to, for 140 quid, I'm not going to let it go and do a bit of work on it, and that's it. And, and that's really it. Um, this video is already up to 20 minutes. I've got one more guitar, if I can just whip it out of its case quickly. Um, I'll actually bring the case over. Now this is my Edwards, this is my dream guitar when I bought it. Um, and in itself, the guitar was only 600 quid when I bought it, but it cost me near a thousand because I had to pay. I got it direct from Japan. Um, I had to pay import tax, VAT, uh, shipping, insurance, what have you. So the guitar actually cost me, with the case as well, it cost me a thousand quid. 
and here it is and this is the one I'm selling I already bought a replacement for it it's an Edwards E EX 125D now if you remember I knocked this off its stand and I smashed this part of the headstock off which I've repaired superbly you can't even see the join and it's got a small crack down here which I've still yet to repair but once that's done it can be a really easy repair, I've just got to glue that back in and get it sanded back down. I'll remove the electric pulling back in. And once that's done, I'm going to put a new nut on there. Now, we said a bone nut originally, but I'm a vegan, so I took the bone nut out. I'm going to put a black nut on there. And we're going to put tremolo cover back on, get the tuners back on. Uh, there's the serial number, ED1441756. Uh, brilliant guitar. I'm thinking of selling it. Will I sell it? I don't know. I love the 144. Anyone that's a Christian will know what 144 is all about. Um, just beautiful. But anyway, I'm thinking of moving this on. So I'm going to get this fixed up. Uh, let me just put it back in its case. And that is it. So like I say, I've got other guitars up there that need repairs, head stop repairs and what have you. All my own gear. So I've never got an excuse to not be busy in this house. I, it's funny, I was talking to one of my friends yesterday, uh, from church, I think it might have been Rob Ford, and I says there's never no reason for me to not be busy. It's just non-stop in here, and, and it's brilliant. Uh, I praise the Lord for that. Um, you know, because there's nothing with idle hands and all. What do you say about idle hands and all? That? Could have got something to do with some. I don't know, I've got no idea. But I love being busy. I love being stuff to do. There's never not out to do in this workshop. But that really is it for now. I'm going to move this guitar out of the way. I know this video is a bit long-winded and it's a little bit, little bit sketchy because you know I don't edit these things. I just film them, re-encode them, upload them. That's it. Don't believe in doing all the editing. I ain't got time for editing. It took, these videos take long enough to re-encode and upload. It takes a couple of hours doing that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this video out. Um, this is what I've got on the bench this week. Um, you know, and I'm waiting for parts to come off eBay. I've ordered all, all the parts I need. And I'm going to get cracked on with some of these. Um, I actually love what I do. If you've got any guitars that need fixing or working on, or you're a bit worried, ask me questions on Facebook. I don't charge for questions. You know, information's free. Um, if you've got any questions, give me a buzz. If you're looking for a guitar tech that knows his job inside out, that always does a good job, we've got satisfaction guaranteed, all my work's guaranteed. If my customers aren't happy, which we all are by the way, but if they aren't happy, uh, I will fetch the guitar, change what you need changing, and I'll bring it back to you at my own expense. The Lord guides my hands. It's why I've got such faith in myself, because it's not me. It's what I've got, the gifts I've got, the gifts I've been given, and I use them, and I, I, I pay it back to the Lord, and I thank him for giving me these great hands to do what I do. And I think that shows in my work, because, you know, read my reviews on Facebook, check my website out at fretfriend.net or christian-guitars.com. Um, you know, this is Victor Christian from Fret Friend and Christian Guitars. Uh, this has been an armor bench video. Um, I'm going to get this all loaded up now, and um, you know, you're looking for a guitar tech. I don't think you'll get much better than me around here. Anyway, until next time, good to each other. I'll talk to you soon.